Welcome back to Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'm Lee Keller. I'm Kim Cavanaugh. And we're going to be talking about Internet options. Internet options. And we've already talked about cookies and temporary files. Mm -hmm. uh, cookies are little tokens, mm -hmm. and temporary files are those files that are created or stored on your computer every time you visit a web page. All right. Well, if we can get back to our computer here, we'll, uh, we'll continue looking at that. And we'll look All at right. some of the settings that we can do to be able to get right. those because doing it's, the it's, way we want them to Exactly. Do. It's possible you might want to either increase or decrease the frequency at which the computer automatically removes those files because it, it does some automatic cleanup for you. So, so right the there in the here same for, panel. Yep, temporary okay. Internet files. I'm going to go over here and click on Settings. Okay. And that brings up the little thing of information here. Check for newer versions of stored pages. Now, is that important? Um, it can be it, if you're visiting pages that, that change frequently, but I, I think that's a little bit of old school stuff there. I, I think I would leave that set it automatically. So many yeah. sites are now dynamically generated that um, there's already a process on the page itself that will make sure that you get the freshest content. Okay. So I wouldn't how worry much about disk that space are we going to save for those temporary files? Right now, right now it's set down there pretty low, about. Uh, you know, now, what's the drawback about making it larger? Well, then you have less space for other things on your ah, computer. So, right here it says I'm using over 9,500 megabytes. So, that's almost a gig? I think a 1,000 of those is a gig. Oh, so, wow. we're looking so, at 9 gigs of space. Right. So, by default, it gives you a size. Um, I don't know. I, I've never really saw a reason to change this, to, to be the, honest. The only you. value is if you're going back to large capacity pages, a lot of graphics and things, and say they don't change much, well, that's when it uses that cache area where it's going to load it quickly from your hard drive right. rather than downloading the whole page again. So if you're going to pages where, say, like movie files or things are being stored and you're watching the same movie over and over, right. why would you do that? I don't think I would. I think okay. I would save that file onto my computer <laughs> yeah. in my documents somewhere. So if you're in that kind of a situation or large graphic files, then you might want to make it a little bit bigger. It's going to affect performance under certain conditions, but right. in most cases it's good. Right, and then you've got that button right there in the middle, View Files. Now, um, that's interesting, isn't it? Now, you look up at the top, you see the little address bar up there. Yeah. Um, I, this is a good thing to know if, if you need to do forensics work. Right, because uh, uh, actually sometimes I try to go here and find the files. But you notice we don't have any files in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down here. Okay. I'm going to load my browser up real quick, and I'm just going to hit F5 so I refresh a page. Oh, that's because we already cleaned it out. Right, right we cleaned this out. That's where that's, all those temporary internet those files, files were. Right. And we, we can go to a couple pages real quickly here. And it doesn't really take long okay. to start Scroll to build down up things. a little bit, you'll find a page I there. I can you actually can go visit. home. And if we go back here to these temporary internet files, and I hit F5 in there, Wow. This is what we picked up just by going to those few pages. So all those pages generated all those files. And again, the value of this is, and I think most folks don't understand that, is that you don't want to have to reload those or re-download those, those, right. those files every time you visit a web page. So what the computer does, it loads them in a temporary location, and then uh, it just loads it from your hard drive. Look at that first you file. There you go. I got a, you got a cookie from That's me. That's a Kavank. Uh-huh. Absolutely. That's from a dynamic site that we have up on a district website. So Okay. So there, that gives you an idea of exactly what those files look like, where they go, right. and what the you're Right, and the size that you're, moving, uh, that you're using. So normally, again, these aren't things that you would really change all that often. I certainly wouldn't change the folder where things go. No. You can designate a different folder. Most average users are not going to need to mess around with these things. Yeah. So, I would leave that set as it is, click OK to get out of there. And now let's talk about history. History, all right. Well, let's go back to the browser for a second here okay. and take a look at that. Because, uh, whoops, I got this open here too. <laughs> if you click on your browser down here, you okay. get pages that you've been to. Right, those are the pages that we visited uh, in recently. the past. In the past, sometime. That makes them. Part of the history. They're history. Oh, they're history. Okay. That, I, I see how you did that. That's very clever. But there's a couple histories happening here. Just like, right. it, you know, there's the real history. Uh -huh. and, then and then there's the, the history that they, history <laughs> what they want the to tell you. <laughs> okay. So really what this is, this is the history that they want to tell you. But okay. there's much more. Right. Because and actually, I think what's up there in the address bar history is, is addresses that you've typed in. Mm -hmm. uh, but addresses that you visited by way of a link are stored in the other history yeah. list. And if I do Control-H. Okay. 
you're going to see it flash. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now you actually see a list of everywhere you visited, and you can go back. So this is a good way if you were visiting something last week and you went, man, I really had some great information on that page. I can't remember can't where it was. can't tell you how often that happens. I, I use this yeah. a lot, well, actually. It does happen to old folks like you sometimes. It Lisa, does. And me. So it's a great way to go back and find things and you know that, that you've um, that you visit in the past, mm -hmm. so it kind of gives you a way to, to look back. Where was that thing and, and what, you know, when I was on there? So the question is, how long ago did history happen? Um, well, recorded history goes back about 40,000 years, but the history on your, on your Internet browser only goes back 20 days well, by default. I can change that. Right. Well, let's say I want to be able to keep a whole month. I can change that to 30 days. That's easy. Because I can forget right. that far back. Sure. Now, those history files that we looked at, if mm -hmm. I want to remove those, right. I can clear history. And we used to talk about this in security for parents that want to see what the, where their kids have been. Right. Well, Johnny or Sally can clear the history. Right, and they know how to do that the, and because they learn very early. They watch the show. <laughs> oh, of course they do. <laughs> so uh, if I, what happens if you hit that button? If I hit that button, that history that we just looked at is going to disappear. Okay, so, so we go back to the browser. If I'm a parent. And I press Control H. And I see that my history has nothing in it. Uh -oh. I know that they're hiding something. That's never a good thing. I don't know what yet, but you can bet <laughs> I'm going to find out. Uh-huh. So is there a way for a parent in that case to, to really retrieve the history? I don't no. really think there is. No, it's no. not. So uh, one of those things that your kids might try to slip past you there if they're hiding where they've been visiting on the web, they'll clear their history. Right. And so when you see that history is cleared, that's a red flag. You know they're hiding. Mm -hmm. You know they know how to hide. Mm -hmm. And now it's your turn to tell them that you know that they're hiding. If they clear the history again, they will lose the computer. Wow. You're mean. Uh, You're mean, Dad. You know, it worked. Okay. <laughs> Great. Right now, across the bottom, we have some additional options. Again, these are going to affect what you see in your web browser. Yes. And these are things I usually do not touch. Right. And these are only going to apply to Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be other options if you're using a different browser. So we don't usually touch these. Okay. Uh, accessibility so we, might mess with a little might, bit yeah, if you need those services. If you want to have uh, your fonts displayed a little bit larger size, but you can also do that actually in the browser itself uh, when you're on the page where you're having trouble reading. Okay, are well, we going to look at security at all? Are we going to have time to get no, into all that? No, I think we're running a little low on time, but basically, uh, we'll talk about this quickly. These are just for your links. Right. You usually don't want to change these, like you said, but you can use hover colors, okay. which means when I move my mouse over a link on the web, it's going to glow red now. Well, let's and see I how can that change works. it. Can you show us how that works? I can actually change it so it would glow any of those colors. Maybe I want this really ugly green. That's nice. So. And then so when we, when we click, click OK, okay right. and then we're going to go OK down here. So and here now you're on I, Google. Ah, see? so now when you link, despite what the web page may have programmed, mm -hmm. um, you can override that. Maybe, and again, these are kind of accessibility things. Maybe, you know, blue and black are yeah. colors that you have a hard time discerning. You can actually change it to a brighter, more, um, more uh, color that has higher contrast for you. Now let's show them a quick browser trick here since we've got just a minute. Okay. Uh, what if I want my, my text to be bigger, Lee? How do I do oh, that's that? A, I love that one, too. Go to View. Go to Text Size. That easy. If I want bigger text, there it is. Now, what we're talking about here is not the images, but notice the big text where it says Advertising Programs, Advanced Search, and all that kind of stuff. You can also do this by way of a sh keyboard shortcut. And you also notice that the text on the results page comes right. up bigger. But you can also again do it by a keyboard shortcut, mm -hmm. Control Plus will make things bigger. Control minus will make things smaller. Okay. So, pretty good look at the control panel and all the things that you can take control of. We're going to come back next week and we'll look at a little bit more of that yeah. um, as we help you learn how to be less clueless and take control of your computer. We'll see you next week on Computers for the Completely Clueless.